So today I will be doing two different soil tests. I'm not gonna go that much into exactly how to do a soil test. I mean, there's tons of videos on that and it all depends on what kind of soil test you buy. I'm going to talk more about if you need a soil test or not. So I'm gonna do two different soil tests, one from a lawn where I would say you really need a soil test and one from a lawn where I would say you don't really need a soil test here if you have a lawn like that to kind of show you the difference and show you if you might need a soil test or not. All right, so let's just dive right into it. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and I'm an average old lawn nut. So the first lawn we will be taking samples from is my own lawn. Let me show you how it looks at the moment. So I've just top dressed everything and I've already taken samples before I top dressed. You don't wanna be taking samples after you top dress because that will contaminate the sample, of course. So my own lawn, right now it's not looking that good after a really harsh winter and pretty much an awful spring I would say but I mean usually my lawn looks pretty decent these are some pictures from how the lawn looked last year so I mean if you have a lawn that looks like that I would say you really don't need a soil test I mean why would you the lawn looks decent there's actually no point in doing a soil test I would do a soil test if you have a lawn like I do maybe once every three years or something like that or if you have specific trouble areas then you might want to take a soil te test from that area specifically to see what's going on but I mean otherwise there's actually no need now you might ask why am I doing it that's because I have a screw loose I'm a lawn nut <laughs> I, I really don't need one, but I do it every year anyways, just because I'm a nerd. <laughs> so if you're not a nerd, then I would say there's actually no reason for you to do one. But I'm gonna do it again this year again. So I'll just show you quickly how I do it. I mean, I'm not gonna go that deep into it. I'm just gonna show you quickly how I take the samples. So I, normally I just you take something that we normally use for baking, but I need something to put the soil in. You need a clean knife. I usually clean the knife with alcohol before because I don't want anything from the knife to contaminate the soil. Then I just start cutting slices like this. And you want to make sure you just get the soil from the bottom part. You don't want the organic matter to thatch. You only want the soil. And I just scrape off any soil. And just put it back. Then I move on to the next area. I have my samples now. Now all you need to do is just mix it up, get a nice mix. I mean, you wanna make sure you take it from different areas in the lawn to give you a good overall picture. Now you might have some different problem areas in your lawn where you might have maybe some clover or something year after year. You might wanna take soil tests of those areas specifically. Then I would just take samples from that area and then put it in a different bag. I don't really have those kind of problem areas. I have some weeds here and there in the lawn, but overall it kind of looks the same. So I take samples from all across the lawn just to give me a good overall picture and by the way you should never be <laughs> waving around the knife like I am <laughs> I hope there aren't any kids watching this never wave around with a knife <laughs> and then for my soil test I need three deciliters of soil and don't worry I don't bake with this this is only for lawn care <laughs> so that's one two now I'm done with my soil test from my lawn. All right, now let's go over to a lawn where I would say you need a soil test. If I had a lawn like that and I wanted to fix it, I would definitely start with the soil test. So I'll see you over there. So now we're at my in-laws. This will be my project lawn for this year, trying to sort things out. I mean, they have all kinds of issues. Let me just show you how it looks. I mean, the amount of clover is just insane. I think there's actually more clover than there's grass. And then they have dandelions. I mean, all sorts of weeds. I think it's more weeds than anything else. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but it's also so uneven. It just goes up and down everywhere. And this might be just one of the most compacted lawns I've ever come across. It's just so compacted. That's why I've given my father-in-law a uh, swordman, the holocore aerator, to kind of aerate the entire lawn, try to leave, relieve some of that compaction. And I think he started to figure out exactly how much work that is. <laughs> so as I said, this will be my project lawn for this year. I've said that I'll try to sort it out, relieve the compaction, get rid of some of the weeds. I mean, that's a challenge for us in Europe because we don't have 
access to any herbicides. They're just not allowed. We can't even use glyphosate. We can't use anything. Nothing is legal for homeowners. So what I'll do this year for this lawn is try to level it out and just use culture practices good fertilization, regular mowing, aerating, scarifying, dethatching, all of that stuff to kind of get it under control, all the weeds. You could argue that you could just start over since there's just so many weeds, but I don't want to do that. I, I want to see if we can try to fix it without starting completely over from scratch. And this is a lawn where I would say to be able to do that, you would need to start with the soil test. You do need to know what's going on in the soil. I need the soil test here to kind of know where to start, to kind of pinpoint where the issues are. Is the pH too high, too low? Is there a deficiency of any kind of nutrients? And for anyone who has a lawn that looks kind of like this, I mean, it hasn't been neglected. They've been keeping up with their fertilizing and everything like that. It's just that they're not nerds like I am. They haven't been keeping up with scarifying, aerating and stuff like that. And then over the years, I mean, you'll end up with this. So if you have a lawn that kind of looks like this, subscribe and follow along. And maybe you can just follow the steps I do and turn around your lawn as well. But for now, let's start off with a soil test to kind of give us an idea of how the soil looks underneath this. And of course, out of all places I could have chosen to take a sample, I took one here. Uh, now someone has to tell him. <laughs> or I could just not tell him and let him find out on his own when the robo mower doesn't work. <laughs> but I mean, isn't that typical? You could have chosen the entire lawn and you took the one spot where the damn cable goes. <laughs> Andesh! So just the same procedure as last time. Just mix everything up. And again, don't wave the knife around like a ninja. <laughs> and there you go. Now we have a soil sample from this lawn as well. Now let's go back to my place. All right, so I have my soil tests here. One from my own lawn, where I would say you don't really need one. And then one from my in-laws lawn. In-laws lawn. In-laws lawn. In-laws lawn. <laughs> All right, and then one from my in-laws lawn. Now, if you have a lawn that looks like that, I would definitely say start off with the soil test. You kind of need to know where to begin if you want to do a plan to kind of fix it. I mean, if you've never done a soil test in a lawn like that, you would need to start off by looking at the soil. How does it look? Where can you improve it? Do you have a problem with the pH, with any nutrients? You kind of need to have some kind of idea to know where to start. But if you have a lawn like I do, there's actually no need. Why would you do a soil test? I mean, unless you're a nut like me, you don't need to do one every year. It's, it's unnecessary. And again, for my in-laws lawn, I mean, I could blast that thing with herbicides if I had the choice. But again, for me, even if I had the choice, I wouldn't do it that way since herbicides for me is just a way of covering the symptoms. You wouldn't get to the root cause of the issue that might be in the soil, pH, nutrients or something like that. I mean, there, there's a reason why they have a lot of weeds. There's also one more reason why you might want to do a soil test, and that's if you have thatch issues. For instance, this test that I did, there's two different variants of it. You can do a basic one that would give you answers of pH, your key nutrients, your nitrogen, phosphorus and uh, potassium. Then there's a more advanced one that would kind of give you an answer how the microorganisms in your lawn look and that's the part that would affect the thatch so if you want to know if you have thatch issues or not just check this video so in that video i'll tell you exactly what thatch is or isn't and how you can look for it in your own lawn so go click on that video and i'll see you over there 